Well, thanks a lot. Uh, good afternoon, folks. Um, so, uh, uh, New Range is, uh, I guess you could say, a relatively early stage uh, exploration company in uh, in Nevada. Um, but uh, when you look at the project and the company and what it takes to make a successful company, a successful uh, uh, project, uh, I think we check all the right boxes. Uh, it's a very high grade district, it's past producer. Um, at one time it was known as the high, one of the highest grade gold districts in Nevada, going back to the late 1800s. Uh, we've got uh, uh, management with a lot of experience. Uh, myself uh, as a co-founder of Great Panther Silver, Great, now Great Panther Mining. And uh, <clears throat> Bob Carrington, uh, lots of discoveries uh, to his credit, uh, worked uh, throughout Nevada and, and the rest of the Americas. So you know, between us uh, and the other members of our team, probably 100 years or more of experience uh, building companies, making discoveries. Um, <clears throat> uh, working in Nevada, um, number one mining jurisdiction in the world. We're just off a major, off a major highway, so um, you know, got great address, uh, great infrastructure, and so on. And, uh, and then metallurgy, uh, we've done that early uh, because uh, that's something that we've learned uh, both uh, running a production company and uh, also even as an investor myself, um, I know that uh, metallurgy can be key and it can make or break a, a project and uh, this is something that we've done early on and uh, the project has, uh, has excellent uh, metallurgy. So uh, uh, we're pleased to uh, uh, move forward on that. So we'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we go along. <coughs> Uh, Nevada, as you know, uh, elephant country, uh, fifth largest gold producer, uh, uh, and uh, right now number one mining uh, jurisdiction uh, in the world. Um, <clears throat> and the stats you're probably familiar with, I won't spend a lot of time on that, uh, pretty much self-explanatory. We're over on the western side um, uh, in the Walker Lane, and uh, that in itself, uh, seeing a lot of production. Uh, the bulk of that has come from Round Mountain, I think, uh, uh, plus 30 million ounces there in past production and reserves. One of the interesting things about Round Mountain is that it sits uh, on the uh, an east-west trend that's called the Pancake Range lineament, uh, which uh, is an intersection uh, structural lineament with um, uh, the Walker Lane trend uh, going northwest. And uh, our project and a few others uh, are on the, the western end of that that same lineament. So the intersection of uh, of two major structures is uh, is quite important uh, in terms of localizing uh, gold mineralization. So the Pamlico project uh, dates back to the first discovery of gold in 1884. Uh, it was uh, in production uh, uh, shortly thereafter and uh, privately owned. Uh, the district was consolidated in 1896 by uh, the Dodge family. And, uh, and then it's essentially been in private hands ever since. Um, essentially three families that, that have owned the project since that time. And we optioned it from uh, the most recent of those, the Merritt family. And uh, because of that, it's never really seen a lot of modern day exploration. Uh, there's been a bit of uh, uh, drilling that was done in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, um, but, uh, but, but not a lot really. And so, you know, we had to, to come in and, and uh, to some degree uh, reinvent the wheel uh, in terms of the work that we've been doing, uh, airborne geophysics and so on, mapping, sampling, trying to get a better understanding, understanding of, the, of the geology and the controls on, on gold mineralization. But um, it's, uh, it's district scale, about uh, uh, almost 1,700 hectares. And uh, uh, throughout that, we've got uh, multiple targets uh, that you can see here. And uh, the main area of focus is, um, let me get this the pointer here. Uh, down in this area here, we call Pamlico Ridge. That's for the area of uh, past production. Um, but we do have other targets elsewhere in the property. More recently, a, a SCARN area that uh, we've identified over here where <coughs> the, um, the surface is, is uh, brownish in color, when, which when you get down on your hands and knees and look at it, it's uh, because there's uh, it's just fine garnet crystals uh, scattered all, uh, all over the, uh, the surface and uh, uh, very sharp contacts with the host limestone. So there's, there's something obviously in there that's, uh, that's cooking up the rocks. Um, grab samples up to two grams gold, 100 grams silver, that type of thing. We really haven't done much follow-up work on that at all. So we think that there's perhaps a, a deeper porphyry system that's driving this, uh, this whole uh, uh, area and uh, giving rise to a lot of the gold mineralization that we see over at uh, Pamlico Ridge. Uh, multiple targets, as I say, uh, one of them, uh, the uh, pediment area that's of interest um, <clears throat> just off to, where's my pointer again, just off into the, the valley and here um, where the last outcrop before everything disappears under the overburden is assaying about 4.7 grams per ton in a big uh, white uh, quartz vein. 
uh, and then it just disappears. So it's uh, never been drill tested as far as we know, and uh, we're planning on doing some IP on that uh, fairly soon to, to try and follow that under the, um, under the overburden and find out how it relates back to the other mineralization that, uh, that we know about. Where are we going? It's not advancing here. There we go. Uh, so just zooming in a little bit uh, to the Pamlico Ridge area, um, the, uh, the main area, you can see some of the old workings here uh, along this, uh, this ridge, which is about a kilometer and a half long. There's also an old shaft down here. There's mineralization as well, but separated by some east-west structures, potentially related to that east-west pancake range lineament. And um, uh, so we're not quite sure how this ties in with, with all of this here, but essentially we've got about a kilometer and a half of uh, good mineralization coming through the ridge. Parallel zone over here at Goldbox Canyon. There's uh, the Merritt Decline. This just sits in here in the middle as well. And uh, so about a kilometer across this way, a kilometer and a half that way, and then open in all directions. So it's a good size area. And the, uh, uh, the underground workings, <coughs> excuse me, you can see scattered around here, these pale colored areas of the, the old dumps. There are about 300 of these that we've surveyed uh, so far. And uh, the, the uh, underground workings through this ridge, uh, we estimate somewhere around eight kilometers of, of underground workings. So it's pretty substantial. Uh, just on the decline itself, uh, this was put down by the family that we owned, the, uh, that we optioned the property from. So just recently, 2013, and um, uh, they hadn't sampled the insides of it. And uh, so when we did that, uh, we picked up uh, uh, almost uh, 76 meters of about three grams material, individual assays up to 100 grams or so. So we knew there's some very high grade material there. We did some some drilling around the. Uh, uh, the bottom of this, and uh, it's about 200 meters long, so at the end you're only about 50, 60 meters below surface. And we were getting mineralization uh, from surface uh, down <coughs> um, uh, to uh, just you know, 50, 60 meters and beyond. Uh, you can see some very, very high grades in here. Uh, this is some of the material that the old timers would have been, uh, would have been mining. And, uh, but in addition to that, we're getting sort of halos of lower grade material. So when you average everything out, you're still getting uh, you know, single digit uh, grams per ton. That again is encapsulated by areas of um, you know, lower grade material, about half a gram or so. So you're into uh, essentially what looks to be potentially pockets of mineralization um, that uh, whether they're uh, separated by areas of waste rock or, uh, or some of them might be continuous, um, you know, that remains to be seen. What's going on here? Oops. So I'll just zooming in once again to uh, to the ridge area, and uh, you can see the uh, uh, see the merit decline up in here, Goldbox Canyon over there that we haven't really tested yet, but uh, again multiple ounces per ton uh, just on surface. Um, within this, uh, this ridge, which again is about a kilometer and a half long, there's the old Pamlico mine, the gold bar mine. We're still finding visible gold just on the dumps out in front here. Uh, Good Hope mine, which we've recently put out some, uh, some underground sampling results. Uh, we've been in, uh, sampling this area, so sampling along the vein, taking channel samples across it uh, where it's exposed underground, getting about 14 grams per ton uh, gold, 71 silver over a strike length of about 40 meters. Uh, similar, uh, similar grades, uh, uh, gold and silver, um, over about 24 meters strike exposed underground uh, on the, the level below. So we're trying to piece together the, um, uh, the geology, the structure in these areas uh, from the underground work. And one of the main reasons for that is that we drilled some holes up on uh, top of Pamlico uh, Ridge up in here and unfortunately uh, drilled into the old workings um, early last year, which presents a bit of a problem as most of you will appreciate. And so, you know, not wanting to do that uh, on a regular basis, uh, we, we realized that we had to, you know, resurvey uh, the, uh, the underground workings because we had no records of, uh, of where these are. And with about 8,000 meters of them, it's, it's pretty significant. So we've been using this uh, handheld uh, LIDAR scanner to, uh, to scan and survey the insides of the, uh, of the tunnels and uh, uh, give us uh, three-dimensional maps that we can then use uh, to guide the drilling so that we're not drilling into the underground workings. But in addition to that, this gives us uh, sub-centimeter accuracy within the, uh, the underground workings such that the samples we take um, will ultimately be able to be used as part of our resource estimate when we do get back to drilling because we'll know within less than a centimeter uh, where every sample is taken underground. 
In addition to that, uh, I mentioned the metallurgy uh, earlier um, as to how important this is. We've done some, uh, some cyanide shake assays, some bottle roll tests, and uh, determined that uh, you know, this will be amenable to, uh, to heap leaching and um, getting very good results, up to 97% in some cases, uh, depending on the grades of the, uh, of, uh, the head grades of the sample. Um, but ultimately, this will be uh, heat bleachable, and with everything right at surface, um, it'll be uh, easily mineable. So it's, uh, uh, you know, this is one, one box, uh, as I say, that we've been able to check off early on uh, that will be important for anyone looking to potentially put this into production down the road. So with, with all of that information, kind of step back a little bit and thought, okay, well, you know, where are we going with this? What, um, you know, what do we need in terms of targets and, and an exploration model? And we took a look at some of the, uh, uh, the producing mines in Nevada and uh, uh, particularly some of the lower grade ones and about 10 between producing mines and some of the advanced stage projects, about 10 of them are, have an average grade of about uh, uh, less than half a gram with uh, cutoff grades as low as 0.06. So then we took that information and uh, sort of applied it to the 47 holes that we've drilled in and around the end of that decline and initially just took uh, every single sample in that, in the, that drilling, about 4,100 samples, averaged the whole thing, didn't matter what the grade was, waste, mineralized, whatever, averages out about 0.6 grams. So then when you start applying different cutoff grades, you know, obviously the, the grade's coming up, number of samples going down, so uh, you start to uh, realize that even at a 0.05 cutoff, which is, you know, similar to what's being used elsewhere, we're looking at an average grade of potentially around two grams per ton. So if you can open pit that type of material, then, uh, you know, that's uh, obviously, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of potential uh, from an economic standpoint. So, um, so again, it's really just a question at this point point of, you know, how big are these, these areas that we're dealing with, and uh, the 47 holes that we've drilled have been in a fairly small area, about uh, 500 meters by uh, 100 meters, uh, whereas the area of the old workings is about 1,500 by, by a kilometer. So we've only really only tested about 1 30th the size of the area that we know about, and this is open in all directions. Uh, so we still have uh, uh, work to do, obviously, in, in uh, determining how, how big this system is. So what we're planning on doing for the balance of this year is uh, um, just continuing on with the underground mapping, surveying, sampling that we're doing. Uh, we'll be doing some IP work uh, per, initially at, the, uh, at that pediment zone that I mentioned where everything goes out under the valley, but running some lines across the ridge zone as well. Everything's oxidized to about 300 meters, uh, but there are still some remnant sulfides kicking around. The gold does seem to be associated with very fine sulfides. The gold itself is extremely fine. Even in some samples where we've achieved 100 grams per ton, we can't pan gold out of it. It's, uh, it's very, very fine. So, um, you know, we do think that the IP could be a really useful useful tool for us, and so we'll be, uh, we'll be doing that survey uh, probably in the next uh, month or two, and, uh, and then from that point, that should really help to define uh, some drill targets for us, along with the additional uh, underground work that, um, that we're continuing with, and, uh, and then ultimately get back, into, uh, get back into drilling at that point. So uh, that's uh, kind of where we're headed uh, this year, and um, so just in terms of the, the company itself, and uh, Corporate structure, about 97 million shares out, uh, a few warrants, uh, trading around uh, 15, 16 cents, so about uh, 15 million uh, market cap. Insiders own about 9%, um, mostly retail, but uh, a good loyal following, so probably about 60, 70% of the, of the shareholder base is in, is in pretty good hands. Uh, so, um, um, yeah, it's... Uh, uh, that's about it uh, in terms of the summary. Um, so essentially, uh, you know, we think we've got uh, great potential here uh, to find uh, something uh, quite significant and, uh, and drill it out. And uh, now that uh, sentiment in, uh, in the industry seems to uh, have turned a little more positive, it should be a little easier to, uh, to raise some money and uh, get back to drilling and, uh, and to really start to prove this up because I think it's a pretty, uh, pretty significant project. So uh, with that, I'll wrap it up. Brent and maybe... Uh, You've got time questions? For, time for a question. I'll throw a, an easy one at you. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, wh what brought you into New Range? I mean, you were running a major silver mining company in Mexico with mm -hmm. multiple operating mines. And now you're with this tiny market cap company. Why? 
Um, in a sense, you've almost answered your own question. Um, <laughs> you know, I am an exploration geologist by background, as, as I think you know, and, and uh, um, you know, there, there are two aspects to, to Great Panther. I mean, on the personal side, um, I kind of felt that I had taken it about as far as I wanted to uh, in terms of the size of the company, and I kind of wanted to get back a little bit into my exploration roots a little bit. Um, but also from the corporate side of things, um, you know, we wanted to grow the company, we wanted to make another acquisition, and in discussions with the board, um, you know, we thought either you know, I can continue to look for that acquisition, make that acquisition, and then bring someone else in to run it, but then they don't have that same sense of ownership. Um, whereas if I stepped down when I did two years ago, then bring in a new guy, let him make that acquisition, and, uh, and then there is that sense of ownership uh, moving forward. So that's essentially what, you know, what we decided to do. So I'm still on the board, still very active. Um, Jim Bannatine has taken over and, and uh, you know, we've acquired the Tucano gold mine in, in Brazil and uh, you know, um, pushing towards uh, 200,000 ounces uh, gold equivalent production. So uh, you know, it's, a, it's a going concern, and, and, uh, but that's, that's kind of how I ended up. Uh, I was a shareholder of, of New Range, you know, why this one particularly? Um, uh, so uh, I've been a shareholder for many years and, and uh, uh, I like the project. Uh, uh, Bob Carrington asked me to join the board uh, last March, and, uh, which I did. And then, uh, and then came on as CEO in January of this year. So, um, right. so there you have it. Excellent. Well, thank you. All right, thanks. Our